Hello, we are um, about to read chapter five, uh, titled Intercessory Prayer with Fasting. This is uh, chapter five, Intercessory Prayer with Fasting. Um, we've already read um, the importance of intercession, which was the first chapter. Second chapter was what is intercession. Third chapter was how to intercede. Um, fourth chapter was New Testament intercession, which we just did this morning. And as I said, we're on chapter five, titled Intercessory Prayer with Fasting. So um, let's let us begin. Yeah, let's begin. It says in this chapter, we are going to look at fasting coupled with intercessory prayer. This is not to be an exhaustive study of the subject of fasting, but instead a brief discussion of intercessory prayer with fasting. We are going to look at what fasting does in intercession and what we can expect to be accomplished when we fast and pray. There are times when the Lord will lead you in fasting when you are interceding. There are no commands to fast when you pray, but there are times when the need to fast will arise. Times of fasting should be led by the Holy Spirit. He will direct you how to fast, how to long fast, and what you should pray for as you fast. What does fasting do when you pray? We will see the answer to this question by seeing what, what it does not do first. Fasting does not change God. We see this in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Fasting does not defeat the devil. We destroy the works of the devil through prayer as we take our authority over the enemy in the name of Jesus. If fasting does not change God and does not defeat the devil, what does fasting do? Let's look at the word of God in Psalms 35, 13 and 69, verse 10. Psalm 35, 13 says, I humbled my soul with fasting. Psalm 69, 10 says, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting. Fasting changes you. Fasting humbles and chastens your soul. It humbles your soul under what? It humbles your soul under your spirit. As you fast, your spirit is master over your soul and body. Then when you fast, it helps to release spiritual power out of your spirit. In fact, fasting moves you out of the natural realm into the spiritual realm. It makes you more aware and of it makes you more aware, aware of and susceptible to spiritual things as you let go of the natural realm. You'll be more in tune with the Holy Spirit and it will be easier to hear God's voice. The reason is because fasting causes the body functions to quiet down considerably. It also humbles the soul and lets the spirit man be dominant. When the voices from the soul and the body are shut down considerably, you will be in the spirit and able to discern spiritual things and release spiritual power. The true state of fasting is an absence of hunger, whereby you silence your fle the flesh so you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You must stay in prayer, however, as you are not only more tuned in to God, but also you can be more susceptible to hearing demons speak. Some people enter into fasting and do not pray while they fast. If you do not stay close to the Lord, you can easily be deceived by the enemy during a fast. 
One of the most important things fasting does for you during intercessory prayer is to overcome your unbelief. Look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 through 21. It says, then, come, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Verse 20 says, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. How, how be it this kind goeth and not out, but by prayer and fasting. The disciples could not cast out the demons because of their unbelief. They needed to deal with their unbelief. Fasting overcomes unbelief so that faith can be released. Again, fasting overcomes unbelief so that faith can be, be released. The reason it overcomes unbelief is because it humbles your soul and lets go of the natural realm so that the spirit of faith out of the inner man can be released with power. Thus, fasting lets go of the natural and brings you into the spirit so that spiritual power can be released through your faith. This, in effect, overcomes our unbelief. What is the purpose of fasting? Look at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6. It says, is, is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the hands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? As we fast and pray, our purpose is to loose the, the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke of bondage. Amen. This is similar to what we previously saw in intercessor. We saw an intercessor do in binding, loosing, pulling down, and destroying the works of the enemy. One important point, which we must see in verse six, is that we break every yoke. Fasting doesn't do it, but fasting helps us do it. What does fasting and prayer accomplish? It brings forth restoration and victory. You can read in the Old Testament of many examples of victory through fasting and prayer. In Joel chapter 1 and 2, we see the land in desolation. Then they called a fast and began to seek the Lord in prayer, and the result was restoration. In Daniel 9, Daniel understood that God was going to restore Israel from captivity. So he began to fast and pray to see the restoration come to pass. In the book of Esther, Haman obtained a decree from the king to destroy all the Jews. But Esther, Mordecai, and the Jews fasted and prayed, and God exposed Haman's plot. Amen. Resulting in his hanging and deliverance from the Jews. In Ezra chapter 8, the people prayed and fasted and received protection from the Lord from thieves and robbers as they returned to Israel with the sacred vessels. In 1 Samuel chapter 31, verse 13, they fasted seven days to break the powers of darkness, which ended the downward trend in 1 Samuel and brought forth the upward trend of restoration in 2 Samuel. In Nehemiah, Nehemiah fasted and prayed and returned to Jerusalem, a type of the church, and rebuilt the walls. The walls, hedges, were built and no breaches or gaps were left as they prayed without ceasing. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat 
proclaimed a fast. And as they prayed, God gave them re revelation of the plans of the enemies and direction on what they should do to destroy the enemies. Amen. Thus, we see that prayer and fasting brings forth restoration and victory as the battle is won in the spiritual realm against the enemy. To see what specifically happens as we fast and pray, let's look at Isaiah chapter 58, uh, 6, 8 through 14. This, this passage of scripture also reveals the great rewards that will come to the person who will fast and pray. However, these rewards will only come as the conditions are met. As, as outlined in chapter 58 of, of right motives, right attitudes, and right actions. Isaiah 58, verse 6 reads, Is, is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the, the bands of, the wicked, of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Verse 8, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine heal heal and i'm sorry and thine health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee the glory of the lord shall be thy reward verse 9 then shalt thou call and the lord shall answer thou shalt cry and he shall say here i am if thou take away from the midst of the the yoke the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. Verse 10, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. Verse 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters faint not. Verse 12. And they shall, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations and thou, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Oh, I like that verse. Um, if the, verse 13, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call, thy, call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, not speaking thine own words. Verse 14, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. We previously saw in verse 6 that our purpose in fasting is to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke of bondage. As we fast and pray, the Lord works with us in destroying the works of Satan and bringing forth God's restoration. Beginning in verse eight, we see the results and rewards for fasting and praying in the way God has chosen. Verse eight says, thy light shall break forth as the morning. Light speaks of revelation. Sorry, light speaks of revelation. God will reveal things to you to break yokes of bondage. Thine health shall spring forth speedily healing will come forth speedily in your life the righteousness shall go before thee the prayer of the righteous releases much power and the work of righteousness is peace amen thus our prayers will release power thus our prayers will release power and bring peace. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. 
The glory of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We all want to be in his presence. Amen. That's, that's my, my goal. Reward means gathering for a purpose. Thus, the presence of the Lord shall gather to us as we intercede. So that should be our purpose. Our purpose and our... Um, what is your... What is your, so I hear the Holy Spirit say, what is your, um, what is your purpose? What is your, what is it that you're trying to accomplish as a Christian? And so what we're trying to accomplish as Christians is to see the glory of God be, be present in our lives, to see the glory of God manifest in us, to see the glory of God around us. And how that happens is by, um, being obedient to the word of God by um, being a doer of the word uh, and not just a hearer. Because if you're a hearer, you're just only deceiving yourself. We need to be doers of the word. We need to be doing what the word says. You cannot have no compromise whatsoever. If you're if you're a Christian and you're compromising the word of God, then then I would really I would really question your your um you being your salvation because if if you're compromising your salvation why would you compromise your salvation you, you, if you you wouldn't there would be if your salvation is is drawing nigh and you're and you're born again you shouldn't be doing the things of the world you shouldn't be involving sin you shouldn't be doing anything that's sinful because you're a new creation you're the Christ is in you um the old things have passed away the new things have become new. Um, you have to walk in righteousness and the authority of God to see God's blessings. You, you can't you can't see God's blessings if you're if you're in sin. Uh, I just had somebody call me that we did deliverance on. You know, the ministry that God's called me to is to to people that are claiming to be Christians and born again, but in fact they're not even born again. They might have the Holy Ghost. They might know how to pray in tongues. They might they might have love for people, um, but they don't have love for God because if they had love for God, they wouldn't be in sin. They wouldn't be they wouldn't be lollygagging, basically is what I call it. They wouldn't be going being you know going over here, going over here, being wibble wobbly in their faith, smoking cigarettes. Those people that are smoking cigarettes, calling yourselves Christians and born you ain't born again. You might be a Christian, you might be a Christian, but you're not born again. To be a Christian, to be a born again believer in Christ, you cannot be a smoking cigarette. You can't, you can't. I don't care. And if and if your spirit doesn't doesn't bear witness with what I'm saying, it's because you're of the devil, your father. You need to repent. Straight up, you need to repent. And get that demon cast out of you in Jesus name because if you don't it'll lead you straight to hell includes alcohol includes pornography includes anger unforgiveness resentment I mean it goes the list goes on and on and on and on I mean you should know that if you're a born again Christian the people should have already told you what what to prepare for once you got once you got baptized people are calling me Saying that they got baptized and they got to get the Holy Ghost and they're praying tongues and but just you know I just I'm being tormented by the devil and I'm like okay well let's get to the root let's find out what's 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 really going on in there so the Holy Spirit will show or reveal to us that there's sin in there somewhere there got to be sin or unconfessed sin um, they haven't they haven't um, you know they haven't broken agreement with the devil in their life. And that's what was that. That's what needs to be done. You, you can get baptized all day long, pray in the Holy Ghost all day long, but you can still be demonized. You, you, you have to have the demons need to be cast out. That's that's what it's all about. We need to cast the demons out so that Jesus can fully, fully reign in our, in us, and we could be active and operative in Him. We need to have the full armor of God on. We can't have just just the helmet on and then get get an arrow stuck in our heart from an arrow of, arrow of an offense. We need to have the whole armor. Of, that's why it says the whole armor of God. Um, so, you know, oh, Jesus. Okay. Thus, the presence of the Lord shall gather to us as we intercede. In verse 9, you will call and the Lord will answer. 
Answer in the Hebrew means to speak forth or respond. Thus, the Lord will speak and respond with action to our prayers. You will cry and the Lord says, here I am. Thus, God will come on the scene for those in need in response to your intercession. But we have to be, God's not going to just come. You can't just be like smoking, smoking weed and drinking and or, or, or being in sin. And you just think you can call on the name of the Lord and he's going to come to come save you. It, it ain't going to happen. You can you can you can leave my channel all you want. You're all you're doing is you're just you're, all you're doing is you're just you're 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 getting offended because because the truth is not in you, and you need to repent. You need to repent, and you need to you need to you need to get baptized and be born again and stop faking the funk because that's what you guys are. You guys are fakes, faking the funk. You guys aren't Christians. You guys aren't even born again. You guys got your Facebook profiles with all your Christian stuff and all your verses, but your life doesn't, your life doesn't line up. You know, it doesn't line up. You might come on and you might give a word on Facebook, but then you go and you smoke a cigarette behind the scenes. You're a fake. You're a wannabe. You need one. You need to call me so I can cast those devils out of you straight up. And I'm not saying that because I'm pride being prideful. I'm saying that because that's what I do. You need to call me and you need to say, Confess your sins, and you need to allow me to help you to cast those devils out of you because you got demons, and, you, and you're you not a Christian. You're not born again. You need to get born again. You need to truly repent. Repentance means complete turnaround. You're not, you don't do those things no more. You're not even one time, not even a puff, not even one cigarette a day. Who am I talking to right now? You think that you're, you think that you're, you're doing better by having only one cigarette? Or, or, or cutting it cutting down cutting down from a pack to half a pack or cutting from half a pack to maybe a couple cigarettes or a puff a day that's not it's not born again you need to you need to keep going for deliverance keep going for deliverance keep going for deliverance until you're free that's what it's about in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every demon will will jam out will leave the the, the devil cannot handle the anointing of God he, he leaves that's why people can only stand maybe a minute or two minutes of, 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 of these teachings. They'll come on here and there'll be like four people on the next. Like, they're gone. As soon as I start talking about righteousness and repentance, they, they can't handle it. That's demons. Those are demons. <clears throat> Verse 10, your light or illumination shall rise in obscurity or darkness. In other words, understanding shall come forth. Our darkness or duskiness or that which what has been concealed will be as the noonday. What was not clear to you will be made very clear like the light of the noonday. Just like when you get born again, everything becomes clear and you're like, wow, all those years I called myself a Christian and I did all those things for the Lord. But the, the Jesus will say, I never knew you. I don't care if you're smoking cigarettes, you're drinking, you're cussing, you're looking at things you shouldn't look at, you're watching TVs that you shouldn't be looking at, you're listening to, to rock and roll and heavy metal and rap music and all these things, and you're not and, and, and you're allowing the devil to live in your house, and you're living with people that are that are into that kind of stuff. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. You're living with people. I don't care if they're your mom, I don't care if they're your they're your husband, your wife, your kids. You don't you don't allow that as a, as a deliverance, as a, as a person of God, you should not allow that in your house. You need to stand up for truth and for, for righteousness. There's no more playing games. Either you're either in or you're out. The Lord promises perpetual guidance for those who fast and pray. He will satisfy or fill to satisfaction your soul in drought. The Lord will meet the needs of the intercessor abundantly. Sure he will. The, the Lord's going to meet your needs if you're an intercessor. The Lord's going to meet your needs if you're obeying God. The Lord's going to meet your needs if, if you have no sin and you're not walking in sin. You think he's going to answer your prayers if you're sleeping around or you're doing something you shouldn't be doing? He ain't going to answer your prayers. He's not going to do it. See, if I was preaching another gospel, the gospel that normally people preach, 
out there, oh, yeah, you know, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be prospered. You know, you're just, you're going to be so blessed coming in and blessed going out. My my Facebook channel will be packed, jam-packed. But I don't preach that. I preach repentance. And you need to repent and you need to turn from your wicked ways. Talking to pastors and talking to teachers, talking to myself. We need to repent every day. We need to repent. We need to, we need to, we need to die. Our flesh needs to die in Jesus' name. We have to die to the flesh. We have to live in the spirit, walk in the spirit every day. Your physical body will be strong and full of energy if you do. Your physical body, yeah, watered means filled to satisfaction, and garden means a fenced garden. Thus, the Lord will cause you to be fully supplied and satisfied with a fence or hedge around you for protection. How are you gonna How are you gonna expect there to be a, a hedge of protection around you when you're when you're in sin? There ain't, there ain't no hedge of protection. There might be a little tiny little hedge. It might be only like maybe maybe an inch tall. Ain't no hedge. You'll you'll be a spring or source of water. Life will flow out of us like a fountain and it will not fail or cease. In verse 12, you shall build up the old, concealed from sight, waste places that have been covered up in destruction. You shall raise up and build again the foundations of many generations. Oh, how we need that in America. Dang rights we do. You will be called the repairer and restorer of the breach or gaps. Amen. That's what I want to be. I want to be called the repairer and the restorer. I, that's, that's, what, that's, what we're, that's what we're to be. We're to be repairing and, and restoring people in Jesus' name. You will build up the walls and the hedge of protection. You will restore the right paths to dwell in. In verse 14, you will delight yourself in the Lord. Delight in the Hebrew does not mean to rejoice or be happy. The Hebrew word means to be soft or pliable. Thus, we will become soft and pliable or flexible in the Lord. The Lord will cause us to ride on the high places in authority in the heavenlies over the enemy and above his influence, just like an eagle flies above the storm. The Lord will feed us with the inheritance of Jacob, which was complete provision and abundance in every area of life. In summary, fasting does not change God, nor defeat the devil. Fasting changes you by humbling your soul. Let it's, it, it lets go of the natural and propels you into the spirit by moving out of the natural realm into the spiritual realm you can release spiritual power through the faith and overcome any unbelief amen as we fast and pray we will lose loose undo break and free people and places from the bondages of satan as we fast for the right reasons with right attitudes and actions the Lord will reward us as follows. Revelation, health, power, and peace. The presence of the Lord around us. Answered prayers. Response to the needs of others. Understanding. The light shining on things that are unclear. Continual guidance. Satisfied soul. With needs met abundantly. Strong body full of energy, fully supplied and protected, continually an unceasing fountain of life, builder of concealed destruction, rebuilder of foundations of generations, repairer of breaches and gaps, restorer of paths to walk in, pliable and pliable in the Lord, in authority in the heavenlies over the enemy, and receiving our inheritance with complete provision. Amen. Amen. So those of you who who, uh, who just came in, you might want to start this from the beginning. It was a really good teaching. Um, awesome and amazing about fasting and praying. Amen. I'm done. So chapter six, the next one is qualities of the effective intercessor.